Next, from Springfield, we attend a press conference and hear from those supporting a bill that would ban so-called toxic pavement sealants. We'll then hear from Mark Beal, the executive director of the Chemical Industry Council of Illinois, who says that the concerns over coal tar sealants are misguided. This runs about 15 minutes. Once again, I'm uh, uh, Holly Rosenkranz. I'm a board certified in internal medicine. Uh, the Chicago chapter of Physicians for Social Responsibility, PSR, supports HB 2958, amending the Environmental Protection Act to prohibit the sale or use of coal tar sealant products in the state, except for highway structures. This legislation would reduce known cancer risks in our community. We are a medical science-based environmental advocacy group consisting of doctors, nurses, public health specialists, and other concerned citizens of Illinois. Our support for this bill is aligned with the policy adopted by the American Medical Association, the AMA, in November 2016 and scientific studies. Coal tar sealants contain benzene, naphthalene, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs. The AMA advocates for legislation either banning the use of pavement seal coats containing PAHs or mandating products with minimal PAHs. The AMA noted that studies show that individuals with lifelong exposure to coal tar sealed coat treated pavements and playgrounds have a 38-fold higher risk of cancer. This finding was based on parts in part on soils collected in Chicago near parking lots with and without coal tar sealants. The AMA pointed to the International Agency for Research on Cancer Determination that, quote, PAH compounds have been proven to be carcinogenic, mutagenic, and teratogenic to humans, end quote. Along the same lines, in 2016, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services listed coal tars and coal tar pitches as, quote, known to be human carcinogens, end quote. Coal tar sealants endanger children playing on driveways, playgrounds, and other pavements. Adults are directly exposed to these carcinogens when repairing driveways and other pavement. Also, these seal coats erode over time with carcinogens tracked into homes on shoes and blown in with dust. The degraded coal tar also leaches into water, soil, and air, exposing fish and other aquatic life to harmful chemicals. Analyzing streambed sediments in the Milwaukee area and U.S. Geological Survey found last year that runoff and dust from pavement with coal tar sealants is the primary source of PHS in these streams. Furthermore, the AMA observed that alternatives to coal tar-based seal coats, including asphalt, acrylics, or latex seal coats, have low or no PAHs and are available at similar cost. Some states, including Washington and Minnesota, have already enacted statewide bans on using coal tar sealants. Also responding to the toxicity of these products, New York and Massachusetts adopted restrictions on their use. In Illinois, several municipalities have adopted bans joining larger cities around the nation, including San Antonio, Austin, Washington, D.C., and Ann Arbor. The Illinois bans cover South Barrington, that was adopted in 2012, Winnetka adopted in 2014, Wilmette adopted in 2017, and Highland Park adopted in 2017. Therefore, PSR and other medical organizations believe that coal tar sealants harm human health, other species, and ecosystems. Furthermore, the use of coal tar and sealants is unnecessary, less, less toxic, comparably priced alternatives ex exist and are in widespread use in these areas where governments have acted to protect re residents. Therefore, uh, PSR urges the state of Illinois to protect the public's health by prohibiting the use of these products throughout the state. Thank you. As I said before, my name is Brian Herbaszewski. I'm the Director of Environmental Health Programs for Respiratory Health Association. My organization's mission is to prevent lung disease, promote clean air, and help people live better through research, advocacy, and education. The main reason I'm here is because of lung cancer. If you weren't aware, it's the number one cancer killer of men and women. You should know that the five-year survivability rate for lung cancer is under 20%. Put another way, if you get lung cancer, there's a greater than 80% chance that you will not be here in five years. Um, much of it's caused by tobacco, things like radon gas, but there are many other causes as well, including uh, exposure to carcinogenic chemicals. So you've already heard about coal tar and what's in it, those polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are carcinogenic. Um, Per the U.S. Geological Survey, PAHs and coal tar-based sealants increase the risk of lung, skin, bladder, and respiratory cancers. If you look at some of the labels on some of the materials made with um, 
this cold tar or cold tar pitch. It could also be linked to blood, liver, scrotal, and stomach cancers. Coal tar products can contain up to 10,000 times more PAHs than other seal coat products. They emit huge amounts of dangerous chemicals in our communities, and they particularly target babies and young children. Two ways. They off-gas fumes when they're applied up to eight years later, and they're also tracked into homes as dust produced from those seal-coated surfaces as they wear away. Now, the end result is that the PAH content of dust in homes near surfaces coated with coal tar products is up to 25 times higher than where alternative seal coat products were used. And you've already heard of the increased risk of cancer 38 times higher. In other words, it, you know, this is actually higher than the risk threshold that U.S. EPA uses to call for remediation at sites. So in other words, living near one of these surfaces can be more dangerous than living next to a toxic brownfield that EPA says needs to be cleaned up to protect public health. Now when we talk about the dust getting into homes, babies crawl on floors. They constantly stick their hands in their mouths. Kids play in dirt. That's how young people get exposed to this. Now it's hard to, hard to grasp the scope of this exposure. Um, when you look at PAHs, other main sources are things like car exhaust and truck exhaust and bus exhaust. What you would think of is that smelly, stinky, dangerous fumes that come out the tailpipe. But you should know that when you look at how much PAHs are out there in the environment, where they come from, the combined PAH releases each year from newly applied coal tar-based coal tar sealants are estimated to exceed the annual vehicle emissions of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So what's being applied to driveways and playgrounds around our state cause, can cause more cancer risk every year than every car, truck, and bus that's operating. There are clear alternatives to these products that are much less dangerous, not only to adults but to children. And given the huge cancer risk that we're now inflicting on the smallest residents of Illinois, the need for this bill to be enacted is crystal clear. Thank you. Mark Beal, in response to the environmental concerns of some of the speakers we just heard about uh, the use of asphalt material that we have on driveways and parking lots, uh, they say there's an elevated risk of cancer from the dust coming off of that material or from the uh, sediments uh, from that material going down into our streams. Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, Terry, uh, you know, coal tar sealer is used on about 95% of all parking lots in the state of Illinois. Uh, it's widely used. We view it as the environmentally friendly product, the product that uh, will last for about five years, and if reapplied every five years, parking lots will last for about 30 years altogether. Um, the greatest exposure risk for folks from PAHs, which is the concern that's been raised by the uh, environmental groups, is essentially grilled food, uh, food that's cooked, whether it be vegetables, meat, um, anything that combusts, that is usually the greatest risk for individuals in exposure. Uh, Canada recently came out with a study that showed that consuming one rash of bacon had a greater risk, and one, I should add, one rash of bacon during your whole lifetime poses a greater risk than exposure to coal tar sealer. Um, we view this bill as, as a bill that's kind of in search of a problem that doesn't exist. Um, we view this as a, as a product that uh, is, the, is the best way to solve and, and, and uh, seal parking lots and asphalt uh, throughout the state of Illinois. They would say that there are alternative products that would eliminate the risk. Uh, they compared the putting on new material over the old material is the uh, analogous to us using non-lead paint to paint over lead paint, uh, and that the uh, products that they would recommend that would also seal driveways uh, and parking lots is um, – in the same cost range as, as what they say is threatening the environment. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, the, the alternative, it happens to be a product that we make as well. It's an asphalt-based sealer. Uh, it costs about the same initially, but you have to reapply it twice as often. So the cost goes up sometimes two, three times more in order to maintain your parking lot. In addition, the window to apply this product is about a month shorter in the spring and about a month shorter in the fall. So the opportunity to apply the asphalt sealer 
uh, is a much shorter season, does not work as well, you have to use it twice as often. So there is actually a dramatic cost difference uh, between coal tar sealer and asphalt based sealer. And since my folks make both, my folks know that, hey, the, the, the coal tar sealer is clearly the superior product. Do you know when you say that there's not been one person that's been harmed, that being the case, why do we have these different governments, uh, several states or in communities, uh, banning this material? Well, I think folks need to look at the fact that, you know, uh, this product has been out there for about 40 years. The US EPA, OSHA, even the USGS, none of them have taken a position that says that this product should be eliminated and removed from the marketplace. They don't view it as a risk. And if, if it was the risk that the environmental groups and, and, and other folks claim it to be, you would think that these agencies would have taken steps removed from the marketplace. They have not. They made the case, if I'm saying it right, that uh, the risk of, I believe they were saying lung cancer, I may be saying that wrong, is but the, the health threat is 38 times greater if you are uh, in the neighborhood. I, I'm, I'm afraid I may be misstating this. But the question is, do you know where there – have you looked at their studies based on – Terry, that probably be a better question for Ann because Ann knows the answer better okay. than that one. As a head of an association that deals with uh, this, these type of sealants and across the country, what is your response in listening to the health uh, – concerns of those from the environmental group. Well, it's interesting. The, a lot of the source of the science they're relying on is uh, one group of uh, people who are have made it their mission to um, look into coal tar-based sealants with the goal of uh, getting them banned as many places as they can, following the political route rather than the normal scientific route, which is going through the agencies. And uh, they mention, for example, the 38 times risk. Well, in order to achieve that number, they had to manipulate a lot of the science, including using out-of-date uh, toxicity factors, which uh, even EPA, as slow as it is, has updated those toxicity factors. So they need to revise their numbers and take a look at more modern uh, toxicity factors for uh, pHs, but also more Importantly for coal tar sealers, we think it's also uh, questionable whether you should uh, concern yourself with individual PAHs to which nobody is exposed because they don't occur individually. They occur always as part of a mixture. And uh, coal tar-based sealers is one of those mixtures. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, Let me ask you, as the association, you have, I would imagine, across the country, thousands of people working with this material. Um, are you aware of any elevated health risk of the people that work in the industry and are dealing with this material? So one of the characteristics of the industry is that those who manufacture the sealers, they're generally small family-owned businesses that have been in the business for two, three, and in some cases even four generations. So it's not just a current look, there's also a historical look because these uh, families, these companies have been making the same product and working with it for now 40, 50, 60 years. And so there's a good memory there going back and there's no memory and no history. We have no indication of health risks such as uh, have been talked about here today. All right. Thank you. Thank you.